Sabbath, they weren't Londoners, you know, they were from up there in a black country. And they, uh, it, it must, coming down to London was a pretty novel experience for them. I mean, they were gigging, but they think when, when we did the first album, most of the work they were doing was up there. Although I think I remember at the end of the second day, which is when we finished recording, I think they ran off and did a gig in Switzerland. So something was starting to happen. They were bloody maniacs. I mean, they were completely mad, as far as I was concerned. And no, it didn't change. They were still, as far as I remember, they were just the same when we did the third album as when I did the first. They were pretty wild and, and they, were, they were, I mean, there wasn't sort of bad behavior in the studio, as I recall, but they were, you know, I'd, I'd never met anybody from Birmingham. Even though I went to I went to uni in Dundee in Scotland, but it sort of passed Birmingham by. So I'd never I'd never even spoken to a Brummie in my life, you know. <laughs> so, like I said, to me they were aliens. And, and but the stories they were telling, you know, about how, how they got chased out of a club by the skinheads, and they were they the skinheads were chasing them out, saying, "Come on, let's go and get the axes and chop them up," you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> I'd never. I'd never been involved in a situation like that. I moved to London in 1967, which is when I started working in that studio where those, those, those records were made. And so I was kind of in London in what was fondly known as the swinging 60s. The fact is though, I was in the studio all the time. I didn't have any t <laughs> didn't, I didn't, the, the sort of fun that was going on in Soho and everything, it was kind of passed me by because I was working all the time. Um, and, uh, but London was exciting then and it was all new. I mean, goodness, the, the, the record business was actually a new business. It hadn't, you couldn't really say that it had been a, a proper business for more than about 10 years. If that, in 1955, a decade after the end of the Second World War, the music business was just a spin-off of the film business, you know, and then it didn't become a proper business of its own until the 60s. So there was a lot of excitement about new product and everything. And there was I stuck in a basement in a little four-track studio, quite unaware of what was going, out, going on out in the, in the world outside, really. Um, and still trying to live a sort of normal life, you know, going home to my parents' house for the weekend so that mum could do the washing, and uh, <laughs> and jumping in the car maybe and going to Italy for a, for a holiday in the summer. Um, and when I think about it, it was completely it did it didn't sort of gel with what 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 else was going on in 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 the music world and the London world and everything. It's always quite nostalgic hearing it, and it's also, it, it brings it home to me actually that, that through no fault of my own, I was involved in something quite groundbreaking, you know, I didn't do anything special to be involved in it, I was just there and it was, right, you're doing this session, <laughs> so they are stuck in the studio recording this band because you're, you're told to do it, <laughs> and, and uh, bingo, uh, people are still listening to it pretty much half a century later. I mean, something that's 50 years old, I mean, a 50-year-old car, if it's still, you know, a 50-year-old car is usually worth a lot of money. Um, especially if it's a classic, you know, of some kind, Ferrari or Porsche or whatever, you know, any vintage car, roller. Uh, this is classic music, and it's nearly half a century old. And now there are... Goodness knows how many generations of young kids who've taken to listening to it. I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it? You think, okay, the 18-year-olds that grew up with it back when it was made, you know, are now all in their mid-60s, um, late 60s or whatever, and 
their kids got hooked on it and their grandkids are getting hooked on it and their great-grandchildren are getting hooked on it. I mean, it's amazing. You know, you, you, you think it's only Beethoven and Mozart who go on that long, you know, but it's not. <laughs> Quite extraordinary, really, isn't it? The beginning of a genre and the beginning of a, of a movement and the reason why so many uh, heavy metal bands are still around.